Hi there. Somebody just asked on the channel, I was lucky enough to read it, to have a take in the new portion, how it behaves, because he apparently had some problems with it. Uh, before that, I wanted to do a different video showing the different track states and temperatures uh, and how they affect lap times, because somebody, sometimes you see somebody uploading a hot lap, which is kind of fast, and then if you take into account the track state, eventually maybe it's not. So for that, let's have the Porsche, I already chose that, chose the Nürburgring, and I start in hot lap mode, which of course gives the best track state right away. So we have optimum surface, I guess. I chose 13 o'clock for now, so we should have a proper warm track. Oh, it's actually green, so maybe you want to st start with optimum to see where the times can be and then go down to fast and green to see how much the lap time gets slower in the end. <clears throat> I actually I haven't really read what they changed to the 219 Porsche, but they certainly updated aerodynamics, changed the uh, um, balance, putting I think they put the engine further to the middle, which should make it a little more. Well, just should it should make it faster because the rate distribution should be better. We'll just find out in a second. I start with the aggressive setup. Um, just a brief look through all the settings, pressure solution issues, so we'll probably be back in the pits in two or three laps to adjust for pressures. Uh, the Porsche is the one, the single car, I think, that uses ECU map 8 as the fastest, all the other cars probably have one. It has additional rain maps, I think some are telemetry is already on all like that. I kind of like the fewest possible interaction with the electronics of the car. Fuel, of course, is low. <clears throat> Bump stop range already is low, so there's no adjustment from my side. Usually I put the brake bias more to the back. Let's start with this and then adapt to while I drive. Um, I'll probably do some changes there later, but for now I think we're good to go. During hot laps, and only during hot laps, I, there's a chance you end up being faster if you reduce the brake ducts because you don't need as much cooling just for one lap and the brake ducts significantly slow the car down on the straight so but we'll leave it as it is for now we're trying to use all aerodynamic there is a, the splitter doesn't change balance too much so it doesn't seem to have as much effect at least not from four to five yeah so the splitter from Lows to high setting just moves the balance by 0.5.7% maybe. So it doesn't add too much of downforce. If you change the rear wing, there you go, it changes a lot more. Which is actually, this looks like a buck to me. It's from 10 to 11, seems like the arrow is, I don't know, exploding somewhat. So let's stay with, with the 8 for now. Which is Save the setup to, I don't know, what's a hot lap test, 39 degree track temperature, which is up there, just a little blurry, blurry right now, but there you go. Um, <coughs> I always name my setups after the temperature they are driven in because the temperature changes the pressures you need a lot, which you will see in a second, I guess. Yeah, the tires being at 27 PSE right already um, already indicates we probably have to go lower. Um, why can I not shift? The wheel isn't there at all. Something is wrong. Sorry. <clears throat> what is happening? What is happening? Controls. Shift up, shift down, it's all there. Okay. Decrease ABS cycle, or oh, it is. That is really wrong. Everything is really wrong. What happened? This is alright. This is alright. What happened? So, what's the latest I saved? Is this one? Load. Yeah, 
Yeah, now it's correct again. Something was really off there. Sorry, let's go back quickly. Nothing needs to be changed anymore. <coughs> Sorry for the interruption, should have checked before, of course. Luckily, loading times aren't that long in this game. Uh, load the setup, not save it. And now we should be off. Green light, green light. Show them what you got. That's response quite directly already. Uh, refs go quite high. Nice. As expected. It was actually a little early on the brakes. Yeah, I can see why people have problems with this car. Because when you go off throttle, it turns in a lot, and once you touch the throttle, it tends to understeer. Yeah, okay. So the behavior of the car differs a lot from being on the throttle and being off the throttle. Kind of didn't get the apex, but yeah, I see what the problem might be for others. Probably a couple laps to that sorted. So you need the throttle to stabilize it through the S. I stiffened my brake and I haven't really adapted to it yet, so I might sometimes not not brake a hundred percent yet. <coughs> to find out if I can change damper settings to get better rotation on the acceleration and the rears get quite hot during the hot lap working long into the corner. Nowhere near where I want to be. It looks a bit to me like you have to put the apex very late. So once the car is straight, you can just floor the throttle, else you will understeer too much. <coughs> so while some other cars have more a uh, smooth acceleration out of the corner, this car might want a little different approach. Well, you first let the car do the turning, just wait, and then you floor it. Once you're sure, you can just stay on the shuttle. The traction control doesn't seem to kick in, indicating that there is a lot of grip on the rear tires. adjustments to the tires but for now it looks at least like they aren't overcooking on one lap this is more 
don't like it. But indeed, the car drives quite different from anything else. But the older 218 Porsche did that as well. This is more of the double X packs we want. Yeah, the S works quite okay if you just stay a little on the throttle to keep the car from turning in too much. I think once you get the hang of the car, it could be quite quick. I remember doing 54s, 53s maybe. In the Audi and Mercedes with the 218 cars. I'm already well near that without really driving good. Let's try a clean lap. Can probably break later there. Second gear works quite well there. barely have to work with oversteer the car just just does have so much grip patience to not go on the throttle that early. Maybe with a little adjustment you can actually take the Schumacher as flat. Had to back off a little there. Six or not? Okay, I'll take a look at the tires now because I tend to forget before I cross the line. rotates like crazy once you know how it's done just a little luck up there and a bit too eager probably need to change the dampers just a little. So, check the tires now. Front right seems alright. Front left could take a little more. Same as the rear tires. It's 
so that's around four, five clicks maybe on all tires all around. Except for the front left, that looks good to me already. So we'll change that and see how the time improves, because the dampers, um, dampers, the pressures have quite a big impact on grip level. Maybe I like it like this. I think this was about all right. <clears throat> um, I'd say we just keep going with that. I like to take a look at the dampers, um, but then again, I'm not so sure yet. Um, maybe that could help us a little with rotation on the throttle. We'll find out in a second. Not gonna change too much, or not fiddling with too much before I actually know how to drive it. Let's drive a proper lap and then change track state or Let's start with temperature. We we'll also have to do a test on the Monza straight. When which gear should be used in that car. Not as quick as the lap before, but still, if I don't screw it here, it's quite good. Hmm. Differential might have helped already. right there just for lifting very slightly that was a bit hot pressure's a lot better now almost on point and I'm always aiming for roughly 28 psi point zero better. rotates so good when you get the point right that was better still not how I want it But compared to the last lap, at least, it was not bad. Yeah, 
definitely doing still doing way too much micro adjustment there during the corner so I'll try just one more Yeah, well, looks like I'm not gonna beat that one right now. Can be so early on the throttle. I think it's, there can be a setup that just goes flat through there. I just three tenths down before on the delta, now it's just two. Let me try fourth here. Yeah, I think that's faster. So I found something again, and that clearly says I should end it. So the pressures are were a little better now. And the car was turning better right from the start of the lap. Um, let's say 53.5 is definitely possible with a almost clean lap or so. And now we will go back to the menu, change something about the track state. Um, and let's start maybe with... Let's go down with the temperature, for example, to the lows the game has on. Oh, that was a bit far. The lows the game has on offer is 10 degree air, and if we make the cloud cover like 100%, we shouldn't get any sun and very low track temperature. And I'll show you what this that does to lap times. And the looks, of course. So if I just load the setup I just had, we will see that those pressures will probably not be enough to heat the tires as much as they need. Um, because we have now, what is it, 23 degrees cooler track. So let's just go out with what we got. And I'm pretty sure the tires will actually be have less pressure by the end of the lap as they have now. But the, I expect the grip to be a lot. In this game, kind of a cooler track helps the tires and allows a little more grip. And cooler air provides more oxygen for the engine, so you will also be faster on the straights. You can already see the front tires, they don't really have the temperature I want, it's just too cold. And also not the pressure of course. So from the initial 27 they had, they now go down to 26 and a half. So they keep deflating throughout the lap even though I'm, well I am pushing. So good. So we'll definitely have to do some adjustment. I'll just go for the end of the lap to see how low the tires will actually go. 
And there's also something we can do about the temperature of the tires, of course. Well, the rear temperature looks fine to me, the front doesn't. Okay, 26, 2 and 3 all around. So we need at least 10 more clicks in the setup with tire pressures. Uh, am I blind there? So I literally do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. And then there was another six or seven missing. So I'll try like this. So I add 13 all around now. Then we'll see that the car should be better. And also what I'm gonna change um, to keep the front tires heated is to reduce the brake du ducts also on the rears. Well, I like the temperature set, but I still think they can take a little more. And then we'll just go out. I'll save that a new version of the setup saying 60C, because that's what the temperature on the track is now. And uh, just go again. I can see the tires are. Well, the rears could probably take even more, but we'll see. hard to keep the temperature up on the fronts. Wait, can you see the lap time? Even though it wasn't a good lap earlier, it was a 53.5. Can go on the throttle even earlier now there. Certainly faster through here now. Certainly faster on the straight. So much more grip and I still feel I'm not using all of it. It looks clean but there's more if I adjust the car positioning even more. Come on. So what are we looking at? Easily a 52, is it? Yeah, so we're almost a second faster now, even with mistakes in that lap. Touch the brake a little. Unluckily, Delta isn't working now, but I feel I'm faster than that before. Yeah, double Apex. Again, too hungry there. Almost flat now through there.
you can see the pressures on the front just barely stay above 28 until the end of the lap. Whoops. There you go. I actually can do more pressure on the rears as well. Let me try that and I can surely take away more brake deck on the front. I actually remove it completely. Let's see how that changes the temperature on the front tire. Probably can't affect the outside of the tire too much, but we'll see. Um, and more, even more pressure on the rear. Let's try five more maybe. And this should be something we can work with to do a proper lap. I'd say overall one and a half seconds is realistically the time you can be faster just for changing track conditions and that was only only the temperature of the surface. Right deck is the wrong way to go because the front tires, uh, the front brakes are dying. Let's see if we'll have brake fading. That looks bad. And though the inside of the tire stays warm, the outside still doesn't. Yeah, that looks bad now. And the pressures are wrong as well. Tires way overinflated now with the heat inside the tire. While the outside still doesn't work. I'm surprised the car is still driving. But the rears look fine now. So we have to do some adjustment to the front, I believe. I assume you're with me on that one. Okay, so we should at least keep some cooling on the front tires. Let's see if we can do it with just the yeah, smallest setting. Or if two was already good, that would I had before. might be boring but this is how setup work actually looks like when you try to prepare the car for different temperatures you just have to go out there and drive and test different settings The rear has just so much grip in the Porsche. Now it seems like the brakes are alright already. Uh, that was a bit wide. Now the brakes are a bit hot. Seem to be alright for the next braking down though. But now with the brake ducts so wide open, the front actually keep the higher pressure. So we could reduce it again a little more. I 
and I think the brakes might just to be just about be working. Let me try again. So we were like half a PSI too high at the end of the lap. Let's see if we can just try that little adjustment now. One, two, three, four. Let's say five. Let's say five in the front, rears were all right. Thinking if I reduce a more than let's have a look how that plays out. It's a good sign that I didn't think about brake bias at all yet. So it seems like the initial value I used was alright. You just have to wait until it turns. look all right now all around just front right not not really driving well so far can still be adjusted. That was a little too much all around, I think. Let's see. And that's all just the brake ducts changed, right? So just imagine going from day to night or vice versa. And you'd actually have to change the car a lot for all these different conditions. But then during the race, you don't really have a chance. So for, say, a 24 hours race, you really need to find a good compromise where your car stays in a workable window. Now just let the car rotate. because I assumed overseer and counter steered before the car actually did it. should use one more brake duct on the front. The challenge in the Porsche definitely is to find the small window where you keep the car stable at all times, because right now I'm doing the understeer here, little oversteer there. Just 
little throttle here to stabilize and very late on the throttle to accelerate. Got to look at pressures again. It's annoying that it resets after the lap, but I think it was still too much. I'm gonna change the brake ducts to two at the rear. I think it was alright. And now I would go into more smaller changes. I actually changed that earlier and I forgot about it again. Um, we'll save that version now. The 16 degree level. I think the pressures were alright. To have some final check before I change the settings of the session again. And then we'll go, I think, tonight to even, yeah, decrease the track temperature even more and see if we still get faster. exit. Yeah, my braking distances are better now. I literally lost something because it was too hot. Earlier. from the apex there gave all the time away that I had but now with a more break <laughs> the pressures on the front again are off uh, about a whole PSI Still the lap time is faster. Let me just I just wanna kinda have it perfected, sorry for that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ish. <coughs> I looks also looks like I know that's a reset that version are in. Uh, again. Cause I'd like to see how the temperatures are from inside to outside if I should use more camber or not because there's a lot to go on this car we'll stay with this one for now save the last time what mechanics repairing what happened never saw that before okay so one last time just to see how the car drives with the pressures correctly at the beginning of the lap there might be a bit too much pressure right now but it will cool down during the lap and therefore the pressures will decrease and let's try to rotate and wait you can use a lot of curb here Though I don't manage to do it.
that was better. Look at the delta. But it's still nowhere near perfect, so there's a lot of more time in the car, I feel. It's difficult to drive, I agree. But I think once you get the hang of it, you can be quite quickly. Uh, let's stay with that. So this is about 1.3 seconds faster than I did earlier. The pressures looked all right as well now, almost. But it's hard to get right, uh, just for a hot lap. And let's go back to menu, change some more settings even. Which would be here. So we would have to change the, ah, the time of day actually is here. So if we go to night, this is probably when the track is the coolest. Um, the track should be even cooler. Let's see if that actually happens. So we have clouds. Oh, it's six degree now. So that probably needs another 10 clicks of pressures or so. Oh, first we need to load the right one. Come on, be faster. So we load the 6 in degree one, have 10 degrees less, that's about 10 clicks. I will do 8 though. This was a bit too much actually last time around, so I just add 5. Um, this was alright, so we just add 8. 8, uh, eight here as well. Um, I stick with those break ducks, let's see if there could be more adjustments made. Um, now I hope I can drive in the night just as good. Tires way over inflated at the start of the hot lap now. But you will see it decreases quite quickly. And by the end of the lap we will just about have enough pressure in the tires for them to work. getting the break points right now. Well, the tires are already cooling down. Which time of year is actually here in the Nürburgring? Oops. So I'm quite sure the track doesn't cool down to 6 degrees in the summer. But I might have, by changing the outside temperature to 10, probably my fault. So let's say we're in late autumn right here. So you see the pressures have decreased by a whole PSI by now. Rear looks okay. Could be a bit less. Front is just about a right to the end. Rear stays stable almost. But the fronts lose a lot. Right now it feels like there's a threshold where the car becomes faster while the temperature gets lower. Now it seems like 
it's getting slower again, the track. But it might just be me, so I need to do a couple more laps just to confirm that. That's the hard bit about testing. It's hard to compare different apps when you drive them differently all the time. Probably can get it into 52s again, but doesn't feel as fast as before. Might be from the pressure, so just the tire temperature not being there. Well, there you go, 52 it should be, just about. Didn't nail the apex there, or the apexes. Same again here. Same as the last lap. So there's probably two more tents easily. at least three to four corners where I lost a tenth or more. It's nowhere near clean driving. <sighs> Very unsatisfying. Need to improve. Forcing it too much. Uh, let's make a little change to the front because I think at the start of the lap the pressures are just too high. Let's go down five. Um, don't think there's a reason to shut down the brake ducts more because the tire temperature inside at least stays alright, just outside is a bit off, but there's nothing I can change about that really. I, I could try driving very, very soft tires to have high, uh, warmer surface. But then we wouldn't use the whole surface of the tire to generate grip, but only like the outside borders of it. And the middle wouldn't touch the ground. for now. Oh boy, I'm driving really bad. I'm sorry for that. Focus once more. 
Um, okay, I'll just do one more try. And if I don't hit the lead time, I say in the cold, it gets slower. That's what I'm going to say. Last lap, and then we'll go for high temperatures and green track. And you will see there are probably three or four seconds off that lap time here. to avoid the invalid lab there. that epics once and overcooked it here I'm a great example of driving but it's also a great example of how many laps you need to push a car to its absolute limit so let's say that would have been a 52 6 maybe 5 at best so still slower than uh, in the 10 degree weather and now let's compare that quickly to very bad track conditions which means it's very hot and the shun sun is shining down a lot I think uh, if you follow the weather it might be 4 5 p.m. where the track is actually the hottest let's try 4 let's sorry wrong thing let's go for no cloud low where it's clear and I'd actually want the highest temperature I can have, which is 35. Uh, and I wanted to decrease the grid level to green. And now we'll find out how slow this car can get. Me on the wheel. Let me see. So probably our pressures will be very wrong now, so I'll just load this 39 degree version right away, which probably has too much pressure as we can see, so the track temperature is now at 48, it will melt the tires I'm sure, we'll find out, have to increase the brake ducts for that, uh, let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down right away maybe, and see how this is on trajectories making sure I did not change anything else like yeah here that was safe please just change the temperature keep it and let's go green light, green light. go 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 So no skid marks now, so the braking points have to be found some, somewhere differently than just using where the track is whacked. So we already miss kind of a lot of straight line speed.
grip level is very different. Can't attack at all. Feels like sneaking through the corners. Pretty sure a real car would die right there if I would drive it like this. Actually, rear tires suffer a lot, they go quite hot. Well, the pressure isn't there yet. Change the engine mode, maybe. Feels so weak. Sort of almost four seconds down. I'm starting to adjust the line a bit and the braking points. Missing a lot of top end power from the engine. Can't even go to six gear here while I was shifting up here when the weather was colder. That wasn't a too bad lap. Let's try to correct for tire pressures and temperature. 55.4, so that is exactly, almost exactly three seconds slower than in optimal conditions. Um, and I wanted to try to decrease the temperature on the rear, so let's use a little more brake duct there and see how it goes. Just two, one or two laps and then call it a day. Almost a tenth lost there just for accelerating a tad too light. Ok, 
can hear the rears fighting for grip out of the slow corner at the bottom of the track. Well, that was clean. Rear tires still getting quite warm, but pressures look better now. That was a bad one. Okay, by now I'd say a 54 is possible, but well, that's two, still two and a half seconds down. gentle there with the throttle. Nope. Well that seems to happen when the rears get hot. Okay, I probably will not improve on this lap now. Let's try six. Six better. Okay, so um, overall verdict, there's about two and a half to three seconds between optimal and worst track conditions. You always have to adjust the pressures, have to take care of temperatures. And um, so if anyone ever tells you a lap time, ask for the track conditions else. You might be fooled. Uh, yeah, I might, might have a different, uh, another video short to take on the Porsche itself and how it needs to be driven. So for now, that's it.